Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. I have seen a lot of misinformation or incorrect information getting thrown around in regards to resizing graphics, but more specifically resizing logo graphics. Now this comes up because I've had to do this in my new job where we have advertising spots and they're different heights, widths, and sizes, and I have logos from other corporate companies, other brands that I have to resize for these spots. I wanna talk about maybe some of the best practices a little bit. We'll get into actually resizing them. I use Photoshop mostly, you could use Illustrator. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing it all correctly. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the logos themselves and what types of logos or graphics you need. We're looking for vector files. Now vector files, I won't get into the difference between vector and bitmap, but vector files are Adobe Illustrator files or .ai files, they're EPS files, or you could also have PDF files. Now don't get confused, just because it has that or you saved it in that format doesn't necessarily mean it's a vector file, but when you get that graphic and you scale it up and it retains its quality, that's what a vector file is. It's a mathematical based image and whatnot. But if you're asking the corporate company or the brand for a vector file, they're gonna get you the correct type of file. The other thing we wanna look for is you don't just want one logo from them because you could get like just the wide version of the logo and more than likely if they're created uh, through an agency or properly through that brand, they're gonna have multiple different formats as far as the graphic style of the logo. So they're gonna have a wide version, they're gonna have like a stacked version or a vertical version. Uh, they're gonna have a version with just the icon. They're also gonna have like a full color version, they're gonna have a version that works on dark colors, a version that works on uh, light colors. They may even have one color versions. So all black or all white. Those are the types of questions you should be asking to make sure that you're doing them justice and putting the correct graphics into the right spots that, that displays their, their corporate brand or their company in the best way possible. Now, if you're working on a logo for your own company or if you are working with sort of like a mom and pop, make sure they come up with these styles of or these versions of logos uh, for their company or for whatever brand you're using or utilizing. And even if in, in, even if they don't, uh, you need to make sure that you're you're representing them in the best way possible. So don't just slap their logo with a with a white border on the the background of something dark. You know, figure something out that works for them that looks nice. If they don't have a version that works well maybe create a version and have them approve that version. Now, last but not least, if you can't get vector files, if they really don't, they just have some PNG logo, you have to make sure that that logo is high enough resolution, high enough pixel size, so that logo works for whatever spot you're trying to put it in. So if it's a 100 by 100 spot, make sure that you have at least a 100 by 100 PNG image or uh, I would hesitate to say JPEG image because all JPEGs have uh, white backgrounds. So, you know, a PNG will carry the transparency, a TIFF and a PDF, all of those, if they're, if they're pixel-based logos, they'll all still carry that transparency. That's really important, keeping that transparency behind the logo. Worst case scenario, you are sent like a high quality JPEG that has a white background. More than likely, somewhere out there, there is a version of the logo that has a transparent background, but if you're stuck, I do have a tutorial on how to remove a white background. I'll put it up here as like a little card or maybe up here. I don't, I don't know where it's gonna end up uh, and link it in the description as well. But anyway, uh, once you get all the proper files, let's go ahead and get into the actual uh, formatting of the graphics and I'll show you how I scale and resize things within Adobe Photoshop. I've set up three different documents here in Photoshop and what I have here is a vertical version, a square uh, style document and then a a horizontal document with a dark background. So we're gonna look at how to place some logos in here. And the logos that I have actually from the company I used to work for, uh, Bex, I have a couple different versions of logos here. We have a horizontal version, we have a vertical or stacked style, and then we also have the full color stacked. And that, that same uh, horizontal version was also full color. So we'll go through a couple different scenarios here and how I would pull these in. So these are actually PDF format but they are vector 
files. So I can open up an AI file, an EPS file, or a PDF in Illustrator. So if I drag this guy to Illustrator, and we're gonna open him up here in a second. All right, we'll bring him over. Double click the top and it'll size it to my window. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is in Illustrator. I opened up the PDF. You can tell that these are vector graphics because the shapes are in here and they are recognized and I can edit them and change the colors and do all that kind of work. In Illustrator, if you have a logo file and you were sending these, you could always go up to File, Save As, and underneath Save As, you're gonna have all those vector formats. You have AI, EPS, PDF, even SVG if you wanted to. Uh, so that's how you might save out different formats, but the PDF will work just fine for what we need it to work for. So I'm gonna exit out of Illustrator. I just wanted to show you that you can open up PDFs in Illustrator. Okay, so there's multiple ways that we can bring in this guy. We could just click and drag him in. That would be fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually go over to Photoshop. I have a vertical template, right? So this is the spot that I need to put the logo, whether it's an advertisement or, or whatnot. I'm gonna go File and Place Embedded, and we're gonna place that logo in here. As soon as I find it, I believe it's Tutorial, Recording, Logos. Okay, so I know that I probably want the vertical version, and I probably want the full color version since we're going on white. We have a light background, I know it's gonna work fine. So I'm gonna place that in here, and it's gonna ask me how do you wanna open it, and this is all fine for me. Open a smart object, just grab this guy, uh, because we're opening a PDF, um, but I just want I just want this first little page. Okay, so we've got it opened in here. Now the first thing it asks me to do is to go ahead and transform it and scale it. The good thing is because we opened it as a smart object or embedded it like that, uh, we're gonna be able to scale it as much as we want without losing quality. So I'm just gonna hit return or enter on my keyboard and that's gonna place it in there. Now I've got a new layer that is this vertical logo and I've got it placed in here. Okay, so a couple things that I do, I think, okay, I probably want this thing to be centered on my artboard. So I'm going to hit Command or Control A. You can also go up to Select, down to Select All. This is going to select the entire canvas. And from here, as long as I have the Move tool selected and my layer selected down here in the Layers panel, I can use my, trans or my alignment tools to make sure that this logo is aligned to the center. So I'm gonna click both the horizontal and vertical centers. If I click on the bottom one, you'll see that it moves. Sometimes I do that just to make sure I know that it's moved to the very center. I just bounce it back and forth like that, and I'm like, all right, it's in the center, I know it's good. I can hit Command or Control D to deselect. That's also up here under Select, All, Deselect, and All. And from here, I need to scale it down. I don't want it to touch the edges. I want it to look kind of nice within the bounds of my canvas. So I'm going to hit Control or Command T, and then I'm going to grab a corner. And this is one of those things that I tell everyone to do, but not everyone really does it. Hold Shift and Option, or Hold Shift and Alt, if you're on a, a PC, and you can scale down from the center out. If I just hold Shift, it's gonna scale down uh, towards or away from wherever, I, wherever I'm scaling, right towards the opposite corner. If I grab option and put option and shift together, it's gonna scale from the center. If I only have option, it's gonna skew. We do not wanna skew. Do not skew your logos. So make sure you hold shift and option and just kind of fit it in here as nicely as you can. Now this is a situation where the logo m might not be the best for this placement. You know, I might go back to uh, the, the folks at Bex and say, hey, you might be better off just doing the uh, this version of the logo, like the icon here. Now, if you really want your text in here, we can put it in here, but this is this is the best that I can fit it. Uh, you know, the other, the other way we can do this, if I go ahead and use the marquee tool to select this and, uh, and, and create a little mask around that to get only the icon, is that we could scale up just the icon version of the logo and we would center that up. I might go back to them and say, hey, this is my recommendation, but if you want, like we can go with this if you need the, the name to be in there, but for this spot, I might recommend just the icon. That's, that's a decision that's gonna be up to them, but it's also up to you to be like, here's how I think I can present your brand the best. And then leave it up to them. If they want it this way, they can have it this way. If they want to just have the icon and they're cool with that and they like how it looks better, then go with that. But always leave it up to them at the end of the day. Um, you know, it's, 
they're your client, right? You're just trying to make them be presented in the best way, but don't be afraid to offer those types of suggestions. Okay, so that's what I would do for the vertical one. Now, everything else will kind of happen the same. I'll talk through it a little bit quicker. So if we move on to the next version, which Photoshop is glitching, um, by the way, if you ever get stuck on these where it's not changing your documents, all you have to do is slightly resize the edge of your Photoshop document. This is like a, a new glitch, but slightly resize it and it'll switch to that document. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to this one, slightly resize. This could probably be fixed with a restart, but we're in the middle of a tutorial. So here we go. We have a square version, right? I'm gonna pull in both logos this time. We're gonna see which one looks better. Place embedded. This time we're gonna do the full color uh, horizontal version and the full color um, PDF version, although I cannot place both at once. So we're just gonna place one, hit okay. It's in there, hit enter, good, it's placed in there. Go back to file, place embedded, and we're gonna place the vertical version, place that in there. Okay, so we've got the vertical version and the horizontal version. Now we want these to both be sized. I'm gonna hide one of them. See, I got two layers over here. I'm gonna hide the horizontal, and we're gonna resize this vertical version a little bit so it fits in here. I'd say right about there, that's pretty nice. Remember, I just hit Command or Control T, I hit uh, Shift and Option, scaled from the corner, and I just fit it right in there. Now I'm gonna hide that layer, show the horizontal layer. We're gonna do the same thing, Command or Control T, and then Shift and Option, and drag from that corner, and sort of fit that in there as best as we can. Hit Return, and take a look at it. Say, okay, does this look okay for this spot? Or does the vertical stacked version represent the brand better in this spot? My opinion is that the vertical version is the better representation. It fits the space better. But this was close. This was a close call. You know, I'm not, I'm not I wasn't sure, but I think this is definitely better for the square version. Now, once again, you can go back to them and say, hey, but the icon looks really spiffy here. What do you think about that? They might be okay with it. All right, so moving on to the last one. Rescale our window, lovely glitch. Um, go up to File, down to Place Embedded. Let's bring in the horizontal full color. Like, I think it's pretty clear that we're gonna use the horizontal version here. I'm gonna hit OK, hit Enter. Okay, so I had to go download the, uh, the horizontal black and white version, but we got that. So Place Embedded, going to the horizontal black and white version, place that in here, and hit OK. So I have a full color and a one color version. I can actually shift click on both of these layers to transform them both at the same time. So now that I have them both selected, I can hit Command or Control T. That's gonna transform both. I'm gonna grab a corner, hold Shift and Option or Alt and scale them down from the center till I think that's about the size that I think they probably uh, represent the best in this format hit return or enter to commit that change. And now we have two different versions here. Uh, we have this color version, this full color version. If I hide that guy and show the black and white, we have a black and white version. Okay, so color version, doesn't look that good. And if they don't have a version that works well reversed with the full color logo, then we're gonna need to go with the one color version. So I'm gonna hide this, go back to the horizontal black and white, Obviously these blacks don't match as like a gray compared to the Photoshop black I have here. So this version isn't the best, but let me show you what you can do. If you only have a black version of the logo, you at least have a one color. And if you have a one color version, you're good to go because if we double click on this blank space in our layer panel and we go open up the layer styles, we can actually add a color overlay. If we check mark that, what it did was it added a black color overlay and we can change that color to any one that we want. See, now it's red. We could change it to blue. We could change it to white. So that's how I would just quickly fill that in as a white color overlay. Hit OK, hit OK, and now we have a white version of the logo that works well on these dark backgrounds. Now that's starting with a um, that's starting with a one color version of the logo. You have to be careful. Uh, this one down here would work the same. Um, actually, no, it wouldn't. That's why you have to be careful. See, if I were to do that with the full color logo, the problem here is the leaf. I have, I have two colors here next to each other that equals the separation. When I ch change that to be a one color, those, that separation goes away. I actually need this empty space here with the one color logo. 
That's why a lot of brands will have versions that are one color, but they're actually built differently than the full color logo because this brand uses a color separation as, as the divide here. Whereas on the one color version, there's an actual uh, lack of space or negative space in here that shows the division between these, these shapes right in here. So that's why you kind of got to be careful. You can't just turn everything uh, black or white with a color overlay. You got to make sure that the logo works for a single color uh, before you do that. Anyway, that's a lot of tips and tricks about how to sort of oh, size, resize, and deal with uh, logos in, in different areas and, and place them into different size documents. Um, I hope I covered enough in this. If you guys have any questions about this type of process, the reason I'm doing this video is not necessarily for the the expert graphic designer. Most, most properly trained designers should sort of know these these types of things it's more for people that I've seen put into places where they need to do this but they don't know how or for for folks that are still new and beginning and don't know all the little intricacies of file formats and you know vector files and what you really need to uh, do, do do justice to the brand that you are you are trying to represent that's it for this tutorial questions comments post them below Thanks for watching, subscribe for more tips and tutorials and creative videos, and I'll see you next time.